Hi everyone, welcome back to Code Ninjas. I hope you guys have enjoyed the previous month's uh, coding games. I think this month is going to be the funnest game or one of the funnest games we have created in a while. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It is a little bit more advanced and so this will take a little bit more technical coding. We'll have to think about things like gravity and jumping and all these things, but I think you guys are up for the challenge. Um, we are going to be creating a game called Jumping Monkey and it's similar to Angry Birds which I know a lot of you guys love Angry Birds. And so this is kind of sort of similar to how Angry Birds, uh, the coding that is used in Angry Birds. So I think this will be very interesting. Basically, this is what we're doing. A monkey. I will touch the tree. Hold up. There we go. And that is, and we did it. So that is our game, Jumpy Jumpy Monkey. We have sound for this game. However, I need you guys to give my computer uh, some some grace and mercy today. I think you guys, as I told you guys last month, my computer is very old. I think it's going on seven, eight years at this point, and it is slow. It will most likely freeze up at some point. It probably may not play our sound whenever we want to play sound because it likes to do whatever it wants to do, and it doesn't like to do what I tell it to do. Um, it also likes to contemplate the meaning of life before following my commands, and so I just need you guys to give it some... Uh, Breathing room today, we'll hopefully try to make it through with as little frustration as possible. But um, come over here to scratch at mit.edu. Whoops. Like always, come here to create. So like I said, this game, Jumping Monkey, is going to be a little bit more advanced. So we're going to do some things at the start of this game that may not necessarily make complete sense right now. Um, but as the game goes on, I'll try to explain it as best I can, and it will make sense by the end of this game. But we just got to do some prep work here, okay? So first things first is we're going to get rid of the cat, and we're going to load two sprites. So the first sprite is we're going to get a monkey, because monkeys are known for eating bananas. Although you don't have to use a monkey you, if you want. You can use any, any animal or a person if you really want a person to be attacking Oh, I'm spell monkey. That might help matters. Nope. Monkey. There we go. Um, and then come over here to another sprite, and we're going to get an arrow. We're going to go ahead and rename this arrow Launcher. Okay. Come over here to, to your variables, and we're going to create a bunch of different variables today, okay? Like I said, these variables may not make complete sense right now. It is okay. I will explain them as we go along, but it will be easier if we go and create the variables while, while we're doing it, okay? So the first one is we're going to do false speed. Make another variable. We're going to name it gravity. We're going to do another one that says launch speed. We're going to do another one that says jumps. And we're going to do another one that says number of bananas. And I think that's all of them. I think that's all of them. Yeah, we might need to make one or two more. Maybe, maybe not. But we're going to go ahead and unclick them. As you can see, they're all clicked. So they're, as I'm unclicking them, they're disappearing from my screen over here. So we're going to go ahead and unclick these suckers. Come over here to your monkey. So like I said, we're going to be creating a monkey. And the goal for this game is for the monkey to catch the bananas. Okay, so come on over here. You'll see that I'm making the jumping monkey. I'm making the monkey jump into the air. And the goal of this game is to catch all of the bananas. Clearly, I'm not doing such a good job right now. But that is our goal of the game, is to make the monkey catch the bananas, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have the monkey jump in the air. And the reason I'm doing this a little bit backwards than what's explained in the book is, uh, I'll explain that here in a little bit too. But, come over here to events. When the green flag is clicked... We want to see our monkey, obviously. So come on here to show. Then we're going to set his jumps to zero. 
which means that at the beginning of every game, our monkey will start over once again at zero. The game will always start at the beginning. Next, we're going to make our monkey smaller. So we're going to set his size to 35%. You can make your monkey bigger or smaller, depending on whatever you want to do. But for now, we're, our monkey is going to be smaller. We're also going to set his rotation style. Here it is, to don't rotate. This is saying that our monkey is not going to go swirling about across the screen. He's going to stay in one direction. He's not going to go spinning around in a billion different places. He's going to stay in one direction because of this little bit of coding right here. Okay. Next, we want him to go to the launcher. Change that to launcher, which means the beginning of the game. We want the monkey to start, for example, here. We want the monkey to start here behind the launcher, okay? We're also going to set his gravity to minus, oops, minus 0 0.2. And I'll explain more about gravity and fall speed here in a second. Um, but let's go get this code in, and then I can better explain it for you, there, okay? When the space key, when the space bar is pressed, when our space key is pressed, we want our monkey to go to the launcher. So we want him to always start at the launcher. So if I come over here to my example that I previously made for you guys, this game here, pressing the... Okay, pressing the space P, he always starts the launcher. So he's going to jump in the air, did it. Pressing again, he always starts back at the launcher. See, he always starts at the arrow. Okay, that's what we want to do. Not only, not only is he going to start the arrow, but he is also going to point, let me see if I can find it. There it is. Point in the direction of the launcher. So come over here to sensing. And now this little bit of coding is not obvious. Kind of like you know how the rest of these, like you can see set rotation style or go to launcher. This one took a little bit of fine. This is going to, we're going to use this little coding here where it says, where it says backdrop of stage. We're going to drag that here. And in order for it, we're going to first going to change this to launcher. Then we're going to change this to direction. So this little bit of coding isn't easy to find, but just look for backdrop number of stage and you'll find it. We want to point in the direction of the launcher. This little coding is saying that not only is our monkey going to start at the launcher at the start of every game, but he's also going to jump in whatever direction our arrow is pointing. So for instance, once again, our arrow is pointing that direction. He's going to jump that direction. Okay? Our arrow is pointing straight up, up. Our monkey is going to jump up in the air. Okay? So this little coding is the start of every game. He's going to start back at the arrow, and he's going to jump in whatever direction our arrow is pointing. Next, we're going to set his fall speed to zero. And come over here to control. And we want him to repeat. Actually, I lied. Wrong block. We want it to. There it is. Repeat until he is either. He is either touching. the edge of the screen, whoops, let's try that again, or actually I'm going to go ahead and add in one more sprite here. Go ahead and load up your tree sprite. Okay, I go over here to monkey. 
or he is touching trees, okay? And once again, I'll explain all this here in a second. We want our monkey to move, fall speed steps, We want our monkey to change y by the fall speed. Once again, I will, I will explain all this here in a second, but it will make a lot more sense if we go ahead and get this coding in now, and then we can explain it in a little bit, okay? And we're going to change fall speed by the gravity. Okay, so what did I just do? Because I'm sure a lot of you guys are crazy confused. Well, let's start up here, okay? So we first we have our monkey. Whenever we have the green flag clicked, our monkey is gonna appear on the screen. At the start of every game, his jumps are gonna start at zero. So we're gonna start back at the beginning of every single game. We're gonna make our monkey smaller than what, uh, uh, than what he is currently. He's not going to go spinning across the screen however he wants to. He's going to stay in one is he's going to stay in one direction. He's always going to face us. And at the start of the game, he's going to start always at the launcher. He's always going to start at the arrow, okay? Now, if you'll notice and I'm sure you did, we also have gravity and fall speed. What on earth are we using gravity and fall speed for? Well, in the real world, when you try to throw something in a straight line, it curves and it falls back to Earth because gravity is pulling it to Earth. Same thing if we jump in the air, eventually we're not gonna we're not gonna just keep jumping into the sky and be lost forever. Eventually gravity is gonna catch up with us and it's gonna push us and pull us back down to the earth. Okay, so we're gonna make kind of like a we're gonna make a, a curve, honestly. If you watch someone jump, they honestly do a little curve in the air, okay? Because it's gravity pushing us down, okay? So to make our game work the same way, we don't want our monkey to just kind of keep jumping and never land again. We want our monkey to curve. So like in this example here, when I press this, when I want my monkey to curve and fall back down to earth, correct? Yes, that is how I want my monkey to play this game. So in order to give it that look, we have to add a downward move but we also have to make our monkey keep moving to the right and moving downward at the same time is what we're having is what we're telling the monkey to do. Okay, that's where our fall speed and our gravity comes in because it creates the same effect as a downward tug of gravity, and it try and we're trying to make it move, look natural so that it's more engaging. Okay. So how does this fall speed and this gravity work? Well, every single second, the monkey falls a little bit faster than the second before, creating a downward curve. So remember, you're to my, to my example here. So every single second our monkey is falling, it's falling a little bit faster to create a downward curve is what's happening, okay? The fall speed makes the monkey fall farther each time the loop repeats. So if you'll notice, we have a repeat until loop, okay? The repeat blocks give us more flexibility than, than, the, than the forever blocks. I think I, we explained this a little bit in last month, but once again, if we only want something to happen five times, we'll use repeat until, or if we want, we'll use, uh, we'll use a simple repeat. So like we have a choice of repeating 10 times, whatever is happening in there will repeat 10 times, or repeat until here, if our monkey touches the edge of the screen, or if our monkey is touching the uh, the trees, if either or both of, the, of, of those are true, then our monkey will move will will move farther each time. It farther each time the code happens. Okay, so each time a monkey is jumping into the air. Our monkey is moving to the right and downward a little faster each time that the monkey that the monkey is moving. 
but it's happening in a way that we're not really registering it with our brains. So when, so when we combine, so basically when we combine the fall speed and the gravity um, with making the monkey jump is he's going to come back down in a realistic way as if he were to really jump, if that makes sense. So once again, here's my example. Oops. Yeah, there it goes. So as you can see, he's every time, every time our monkey is jumping in the air, he's moving downward, he's moving, he's moving to the right, and he's moving down a little faster each time. Once again, it's too subtle for our brains to really notice it. But every single time he's moving a little faster to the right and a little faster down. And it may and with the false speed and the gravity, it's making the monkey look like he's naturally jumping into the air. And this is similar to what is happening in your um, in, uh, your Angry Birds games as well. Okay? So, that was a lot of technical stuff. But we do have a book in the library that can help you better understand what's happening if you want to check it out. Okay? Um, oh, I, I forgot one thing. Hold up. I forgot one thing. Come here to variables. And we need to add change jumps by one. Okay. And that just means that every time our monkey jumps in the air, he's gonna jump up and it's gonna it's gonna keep it's gonna keep keep track of the number of jumps our monkey makes. Okay. So let's go to our launcher. And I'll explain what's happening here. And this is gonna be a little bit easier to understand, I promise it will be. Okay, so in our launcher, we are going to add this little bit of coding. And this little coding is, as you can see, the in this game is going to determine the direction that our monkey is jumping. Okay, so when the flag is clicked, when the green flag is clicked, we want to show, so we want to see the launcher, obviously. And we want to set the launch speed to zero, or we need to 10, excuse me, to 10. And this launch speed is determining how fast our monkey will jump into the air. Okay, so you can make this number bigger or smaller, depending on how fast or how slow you want your monkey to jump in the air. Obviously, the slower the monkey jumps, the less height he'll get, the faster the monkey jumps, the more height he'll get. Play around with it, determine um, how fast or how high or how low or how slow you want your monkey to jump. Okay. We're going to go to X and Y and we're going to change this number to minus 193 and minus 131. This is saying that a monk that our launcher will always start at the bottom left hand corner here. Our, um, our launcher will also always point in direction 63. As you can see, this is kind of our, our arrow, will, arrow will naturally point up. Okay? Over here to looks. And we want it to go to the front layer, which means that we want it to be in front of the monkey. If you come back over to our example here, our monkey is behind the arrow. That's what we want because we want to be able to see what direction our arrow is pointing because the direction our arrow is pointing will determine the direction our monkey jumps, okay? And in order to do that, come over here to events. When the green flag is clicked, oh, oh, monkey. When the green flag is clicked, come over here to our forever block. We want our arrow to point towards the mouse pointer, okay? So this is saying that our arrow will always point toward the mouse pointer, okay? So let's go ahead and move our tree to the side here. We're gonna change our tree. I will that a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's play this game and see what happens here, okay? So we have our arrow, as you can see, is moving in whatever direction our mouse's point is moving. Okay, and our monkey is not jumping in the air. 
Let's figure out why our monkey is not jumping in the air. I'm going to try this there. Huh, he's going down. Oh, that's why. I figured it out, guys. We need it to move launch speed steps, not fall speed steps. Okay, right, now let's try it. Hey, there we go. All right, so as you can tell, it took me a few minutes to figure out why our monkey wasn't jumping. And I figured it out. And so honestly, guys, that is okay. If you guys are stuck on a game and you can't figure out why your game is not working the way the instructions say, go through your coding like I did. I just I went through each line of my coding to make sure I match up with, 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 with what the instructions said. And I had to make sure that everything was in the exact order that it was saying. Because honestly, if we switched around some of this coding order, it would not work the way it should. This coding is set up to be in a specific order so the game will work the way we want it to work. So one little misstep like here where I had chain move fall speed steps instead of launch speed, that made the monkey not jump. Who knew something so small like that would make a monkey not jump in the air, okay? So uh, make sure that whatever you're doing it is correct and feel free though to change to change some things if you figure out a way to make something work better or you figure out a different an alternative way of doing something feel free to play around with it figure out what's working what's not working trial by error all those things um but don't be afraid if you're if your game is not working the way you want to work don't be afraid to figure out why okay but we have our game our arrow is pointing in whichever direction that we that we move it to point in and we press the green button and our monkey jumps in the air. Right now though, our tree is huge and our monkey is not gonna be able to get over that. So let's change that and we're gonna make it, we'll try 80. That's a little better. Let's try this again. And he's, he's able to get over it better. Okay, so now that our game is working here, let's come over here to green. Okay, we're gonna actually, we're gonna move our thing below. Uh, let me just the right a little bit there. So now that you can tell, whenever the green flag is clicked, we see a monkey. Our monkey is smaller, and our game starts back at zero every single time, okay? Whenever we press the green flag, our monkey doesn't zoom, doesn't spin across in whatever direction it wants to. It, uh, the monkey constantly faces us, and we have, like we talked about, with fall speed and gravity, whenever we jump, our monkey is constantly moving to the right and down at the same time to give it the look that is jumping in the air and coming back to earth, okay? And at the end of, and at the end, it always comes back to the launcher because our monkey will always start back at launching, at, 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 our, at our arrow, so it can start it again. Make sense? Okay. So that is what is going on. But right now, our monkey has nothing on the screen to catch. So we want our monkey to catch our bananas. So went over here to, to the sprites. And we want it to catch the bananas. So, well, when our bananas decide to show up, there they are. All right, so when the green flag is clicked, we want our bananas to hide. Now, 
The little bit of coding about to do here is going to happen so fast that our brains are not going to realize it's happening. But first, we want our bananas to hide, so we don't want to see them at first. We want to come over here to variables, and we want to set the number of bananas to five. You can change this number to however few or how many bananas you want on the screen. Move back to my example. When I say set, I set the number of bananas to five. If you'll notice, there are one, two, three, four, five bunches of bananas on the screen. That's what we're doing here. We're setting the number of bunches of bananas you'll, you'll see on the screen, okay? You can make them however many, however few, or how many you want. Obviously, depending on the number of bananas you want and how, um, we'll determine how hard the game is because our game is, is, um, is keeping track of the number of jumps that our monkey requires in order to get all the bananas. And so one aspect of this game is that we want our monkey to get all the bananas in as few jumps as possible. So the more bananas you have on the screen, that means the banana that the monkey is going to use more jumps. Which, and the less bananas you have on the screen, that means that monkeys should be using less jumps. So the number of bananas you want will determine how hard or how easy this game is. You can play around with it all, all you want, though. Next, we're going to repeat number of bananas. And we want it to make a clone of itself. So why are we doing a clone and not just duplicating bananas well because we're not really making extra sprite to the bananas we just want it to we just want the banana to be on the screen multiple times we don't want like we don't want a bunch of different banana sprites we just want it to be on the screen at, at a bunch of different places and a bunch of different times is really what we're doing okay so when i start as a clone we want our bananas to go to there it is we want to be a random place we don't want to we we want our bananas to choose for themselves where they want to go so we're going to have a pick a random x we're going to go to zero to 200 random again is going to go minus 140 to positive 140. So what are these numbers here? Why did I choose these numbers? Well, these numbers make the bananas stay on the right-hand side of the screen. Why? Because we don't want the bananas to end up in the front of the in front of the tree, or else the monkey won't be able to get the bananas, okay? Your monkey is going to be blocked by the tree, all right? So we want them to stay over here on the right-hand side of the game, um, so that way, and also our monkey is going to be jumping that direction, okay? Our monkey is going to be jumping over here, and so we want to make sure our, our, our monkey will be able to get the bananas. We also, oh wait, hold up, my cat is trying to play around with my keyboard and I don't want her to mess things up. Hey, tiger. <laughs> so, sorry guys, my cat wants to lie on my keyboard because it's really warm and she likes lying on my keyboard and I can't let her do that right now. But we're going to set the size of the bananas and once again, it's going to be random. We're going to let our bananas be randomly either 50 to 100%. So it's going to be either smaller or bigger. It's going to determine however it wants to do, how, how, whatever size it wants to be on our screen. Okay. Next, it's going to show. So we are going to see the bananas. It's kind of crazy that all of these things behind, so where it says set number of bananas to five, starting here and going all the way to set size to 50 to 100%, all of this is happening so fast that our brains are not going to register that, that this code is actually taking place. Like it's honestly speed of light, almost instant that all these things happen immediately when we press the green flag. It's kind of cool, actually. Wait until so. Wait until. Touching the monkey. And it's going to change the bananas, change the number of bananas by minus one. So what does that mean? It means that every time a monkey will um, will is is going to catch a banana, that banana is basically going to disappear, and it's going to be one less bunch of banana on the screen. Is what we're doing, okay? If
let's see here. Let's do our equals thing, our equals code. Come over here to variables. If the number of bananas equals zero, so if there are no more bananas on the screen, then our game is going to broadcast a game over sign, which we have to create. And the banana that our monkey just caught will be deleted. Okay, so what is this coding? This is saying that each banana will have will take place on the far right hand side of the screen, anywhere it wants over here, so that our monkey can catch it. When the when the monkey catches the bananas, that banana will disappear. It'll be minus one, so that so each time a monkey catches a banana, there will be one less bunch of banana on the screen. If there are no more bananas on the screen, then a game over message will be broadcasted and it'll be on the screen. Okay. So we don't have a game or message yet, but let's play this game and see, make sure it's happening. All right, so we have a bunch of bananas here. There we go. All right, so as you can see, our banana is itty bitty small, sometimes huge. And as you can see right now, my monkey isn't able to reach these in the top right hand corner. That's fine. You can move them. You can kind of cheat like I just did and you can move them or you can give your monkey or you can give your bananas different boundaries. So if these boundaries right here that we're making aren't working, if it's too hard for your monkey to catch bananas or it's too easy, you can change these numbers here and you can make the bananas harder or easier to catch. Okay. So now that we have everything in place, let's go ahead and make our well done sprite. So I'm going to use this paintbrush. This is the last sprite we're creating. This is our well done sprite. Maybe. This is the fun one to make. Don't worry, guys. Come over here. We're going to create a big circle. And it could be a, it could be a, a circle if you want it, but we're going to do, I'm going to make this, there it goes. And we're going to change this color because I want it to be, instead of a purple, I want it to be a pretty yellow because I like yellow. Also, I want my outline to be a blue, no, a pink because I like pink. Obviously, you can do any color you want, but I like pink, so we're going to do pink. Okay. Also, our outline is going to be much thicker. That's good. Just like that, so we can see it. And in our box, we want to type the word and you can use any words you want. You can use well done. You can use game over. You can use congratulations, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use the words game. I'll use all capitals game over. Dun, dun, dun. Game over. All right. So now. We want to make these really big. Right here. There it goes. Then we're also going to add in the phrase, whoops, you used. launches and why do I have you used launches well because in the middle of the space that you see here this space that you're seeing here 
we are going to have our game calculate the number of launches, the number of jumps that are required in order that your monkey required in order to get all the bananas. And it's going to appear right here in the very middle of it. So that at the end of each game, you can see how well you did. Make sense? Okay, so now that we have our coding, I go over here to the coding block. And we're going to add this bit of coding. So when the green flag is clicked, we are going to set our launches to zero. So once again, the very beginning. Oh, we got to create. I told you we forgot a variable. So let's go ahead and make one more, one more variable it says launches. We're going to set our launches to zero. We want to hide the variable launches. We want to hide it, okay? Actually, we're gonna keep that. Right. We're gonna, we wanna hide it, okay? So come over here where it says looks and we want to hide. Uh, before we get to that part though, uh, before we get to that part, go ahead and click launches. And I want you to come over here and I want you to right click on it. And I want you to do large readout. Large readout basically means that you're just going to see the number of, of jumps you've done, number of launches you've done, and you're not going to see launches, number, whatever I said before. That's all you're going to see. Okay. Over here to events. When I receive game over, we want it to go to the very center of our screen. So we want it to go to X and Y. Go to X, zero, Y, zero. It's gonna go to the front layer. So that it's gonna be in front of everything else. So we can clearly see it, whoops. And we're going to see it because we hit it and now we want to see it. We want to show the variable launches. We want to see the number of launches that we have in the game. So basically this is going to be hidden in our game and we're only going to see the number of jumps we've, we've completed at the end of our game. Okay, so we want to show this, we want to show this variable and then we want to stop everything. This is the end of our game. We want to stop it all. Okay. Last but not least, when our space bar is oops, when our space bar is pressed, we're going to change launches by one. Okay. So this is saying that whenever we press the space bar in our game, it's going to keep track of the number of jumps we use to create um, to create our game. I mean, to to get all the bananas. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this real quick. Oh, and we're gonna go ahead and drag. Oops. Yep, yeah, there's. And we're gonna drag this so that it ends up here. And the computer will remember that this is where we want our launches, so that at the end of our game. Oh, actually, I lied. We need to go ahead and play the game first, and then we can. Uh... There it goes. So we need to change this to there. Okay. Huh, why did it do that? Hold up, I see another problem, guys. Let's figure out this problem. First of all, let's go to our bananas. It's doing way more bananas there. Let's go back to our coding, what it said for bananas and figure out. Oh, well, I figured that out. So repeat number of bananas, figure that out.
So if you guys figured out why I had so many images on my screen, it was because I had told the computer to, I had repeat 10 here instead of repeat number of bananas. And so basically it was doing whatever my coding was 10 different times at the same time. So to make this a little easier, just for an example here, we're gonna move that there. We're gonna let it catch the news. We're gonna cheat here and we're gonna do this. I do not encourage cheating, of course. But for this example, and also, as you can tell, I'm really bad at this game. So for this example, there we go. So repeat eight launches. So our monkey did eight launches, and that is the end of our game. It's kind of boring, though. So now we can get a little bit creative with it. You don't have to if you won't want to. But one thing we're going to be doing is we're going to have a sound. So for our monkey sprite, come over here to sound. Come over here. Our monkey where it says sound we want to try let's search for a monkey we want to do boing we're going to put it in here i don't know if our if my computer will play the sound we want it to because our monkey or my sound my computer likes to be dumb but boing. Boing. i like this one better so we're gonna do big boing so, whenever the space key is pressed, come over here to sound. And we want it to start sound big boing. So, whenever our monkey plays, whenever our monkey uh, jumps, it's going to do the big boing sound. We're also going to do a backdrop. We're going to do a jungle backdrop. There's a bazillion different... Um, bazillion different backdrops you can choose. If you want your monkey to be in the middle of a baseball stadium or in the middle of the ocean or however you want it to be, you can make your monkey wherever you or where you want it to be, but we're gonna do um, him in a jungle. And we want to do another sound here to make it a game. So I believe last time I did this, I did a jungle sound. I think it was tree frogs was what it was, but We're gonna jungle frogs. <laughs> now this is gonna be really, really loud so we can make it a little bit softer. Yeah, I like that. So come over here to code and whenever a green flag is clicked, we're gonna do the forever block. We want it to play sound jungle frogs until done. Okay. All right, so let's play our game again. Let's make it bigger. And let's see what happens. Here we go. And that, guys, is Jumpy Monkey. I hope you guys understood the instructions well enough. This is a really fun game to play. You guys can, you guys can play around with the coding all you want. Um, and you guys can play around with the coding all you want. And you guys can make it however... Really, you can change whatever. I really encourage you guys to get in there, play around with gravity, play around with your fall, spree, fall, fall speed, play around with the number of bananas, how fast or how high you want your monkey to jump. This is a really great game to learn more coding. And that is it for a day. But I hope you guys, once again, enjoy Code Ninjas. Bye, guys.